Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Vincent. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, I, uh, uh, as I said, today I'm going to be breaking the word on Romans 8.28 to 8.30. So, first of all, welcome everyone for today's session. And uh, thank you everyone for helping me during this past couple of minutes because I think uh, we got distracted. So in terms of Romans 8.28, I'm going to be sharing my screen. 8.28. I'll start first with Romans 8.28. And okay, uh, give me a second. I'm going to be sharing my screen. Sharing my screen. There you go. Praise the Lord. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. So in terms of what I'm going to do today for this session, because I saw last time when I started the session, it went on for a long time. So first we'll start with the prayer, the, uh, the, the opening prayer. I, I will break my sessions into two party and part B, and then we'll have a, a closing prayer, uh, a Thanksgiving prayer. Can, does anyone want to volunteer to, st um, to start the, the, the introduction prayer. Okay, if no one is there, uh, does anyone want to say the uh, Thanksgiving prayer towards the end? I'll say the uh, Thanksgiving prayer. Okay, thank you, Brother Wilson. Uh, so, uh, Brother Hubert. Hubert. So, yeah, uh, thank you, Brother Hubert, for it. So, in terms of the. I'll say the opening press. Oh, okay. go ahead. And that was Sister. Oh, it was. Okay. So, go ahead. Let's start with the opening prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing all of us together. to learn your word, to study your word, opportunity. Help us to completely focus and not get distracted. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is in complete control of all of us as we listen to sister speaking. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So by the way, sister, what was your name? Uh, that's fine. Uh, she must be on mute. So we'll start the, um, I'll break the word with Romans 8.28. And for the sister who just started the uh, opening prayer, uh, praise God. Thank you, sister. God bless you. So in this topic, and we know that in all things, yeah, and we know that all things, uh, God works for the good of, for those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So in terms of Bible verses, this is a very popular Bible verse and I'm pretty sure many of you all must have read it at uh, some point of time and must be knowing it, might have memorized it uh, and must be using it for their day-to-day -day, uh, purpose for confessing the scriptures. This scripture reminds me so much as John 3.16 and um, the other one which is Jeremiah 29.11. So why did I choose this particular verse today? Because in the beginning of 2023, there were three incidents that um, struck me and I wanted to make a, uh, share this scripture more with you all because I learned maximum out of this scripture like as brother Vincent usually says take the juice out of the um, a particular topic so I'll share with you all my it's like a testimony at the same time it is why I chose the scripture so at the beginning of this year in the first week of January I was talking to uh, I was attending a press session and uh, 
the pastor's wife i was speaking to her she when i was as i was speaking to her she uh, basically could prophesy i realized because she knew who, what type of a person and this is the first time i met her i don't know her one bit she doesn't know me and i don't know her but she knows what kind of a person i am and i was so struck when she knows me as a person in the past and i knew through a friend of mine that uh, people who can who know you and they whatever they say uh, they can prophesy so she prophesied and told me that god is going to use you to do bigger works from what you were doing in the past like whatever you would do in a small way he's going to help you to do bigger things i did not understand what she said one bit and i called my friend she said i don't know so and and i just forgot that topic after a month and the second time i attend another prayer session and in that prayer session there's another lady while i was speaking the pastor had asked me is there anything that you would like to share with this group so this elderly lady uh, tells me to hold on this the the holy spirit is uh, put in her mind from uh, of romans 8:28 to 8:30 and i was wondering what is that and i called again my friend and she said hilda it's everything is fine you don't have to worry don't think too much of it and this is the scripture so i did not bother much about it that uh, and then it goes on now again after a month when brother vansal was here i got one day a vision a dream and in that dream i see a vision of god i don't it's just a person okay saying that i want you to serve me and uh, of course there's music in the background so i don't know what it means but having said that i took this scripture today and now i understand what it means because i learned from it and i want to share with you what i've learned praise god so what i'm going to do basically uh, for everyone before i get into the details into the weeds i'm going to start with uh, summarizing at a very high level um, what i understood from it and then we'll get i'll break it down into pieces so anybody has any questions by the way please make it as an interactive session because it will be helpful if you all have you all can uh, uh, stop me at any time and ask questions because that way i know that people are listening to me okay so the first thing uh, brother hubert anything for me or you are good 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 i am good i am listening all yours thank you thank you praise god mm -hmm. so so basically what i can say is first thing what i got from this by reading the scripture 8 28 to 30 is and i purposely put 8 28 and i'll tell you all why so when you read in this uh, verse it doesn't what does it mean we can live it does it means that hey god is there because he's very merciful in the new covenant we all know he's very merciful and we are living through his grace grace we all know is a free gift from god and and he's going to take care of us but no as i started reading it 28 to 8 30 i started getting um and the revelation by the holy spirit saying that yes god is there for us our jesus who is the truth and who leads us to our heavenly father he wants us to lead a life that uh, that he is asking us to live okay and we cannot say that we will live the life that we decide to choose and do all wrong things and then expect god to clear our mess no that is not what god has asked us yes he is merciful he his uh, gifts um, are there through his grace but we definitely need to live according to his purpose okay that was the first thing that i got out from when i was uh, uh, praying to god to show me what i need to do the next thing is um do uh, so the main thing as we all know um that this has come from uh, saint paul and basically saint paul uh, was uh, was been uh, uh, instructed by the holy spirit that it's a promise for god this verse for true believers those and what it says is those who are true believers and who claim to live according to god's uh, instructions 
and obedience, they are going to be blessed and their lives are going to be supernatural. Okay. Then the next thing what I learned from this was um, those who love God and are doing their best to obey their commandment, uh, to obey his commandments. And we know that uh, Jesus at one point, it is there in Matthew, said the two most important commandments of the first one is love God with all your heart, mind and soul. The second one is love one another as uh, uh, that is to love one another to be a good uh, Christian. So what I understood is those who love God and are doing their best to obey his commandments uh, he's going to take care of you. So what does it mean? Because I purposely changed it to this new King James Version. Praise God. It says that, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. So this is when I understood, as I said initially, when I was told in January, February, I never knew what what anyone was even telling me because if you look at it it says all things okay not some things they work together for good so i was wondering what does it mean work together for good then i realized even because i'm pretty sure all those who are there on this call everybody has good moments in life and there are and there are times when we have bad moments also and some moments can be really bad in our life and uh, they can completely change someone's situation. It can turn their home upside down. So what does God say? Yes, even those situations, whether it is good or bad, cling on his promise. Believe him. Trust him. And what I'm saying to you is hang on to those words because he said all things work together for good. This is a promise. Okay. Then the third thing what I understood is God will use the, the second only God will use this uh, downs because during up times people I don't know about uh, at, for me now that I'm a believer in Christ I've changed whether it is a good day or a bad day I'm whole day starting my day thanking God praising God loving God but prior to this the old elder would assume that life is beautiful. It's only when things are down, that is the time that I would remember God. But I'm just saying this, God will use this to all our moments in life, the bad moments more, because that is when your true self comes up. He will use them to ultimately bring about good, both in your life and through others who touch you. The third point that came out from my high level understanding was God can use all to, all things together for good. As I said, he never says some things, but all things. Yes, there, there are some, and I have gone through this situation, there could be incidents where there are deaths in the family of your near and loved one, illnesses, there are wars, there are recession, all kinds of problems. Okay, because Satan is around to trouble us. But until Jesus returns in his second coming and conquers Satan once and for all, sin will continue to drag its poisonous tentacles around the world, damaging and destroying the truth. But remember, God is much more powerful than Satan and sin. And he'll be able to restore and redeem anything for our good and, our, and the glory of God. So trust in this and hang on to these words because our God is more powerful. However, things can be bad. Even your house is turned upside down. People have deserted you. Hold on his promise. Believe in his promise. Cling on his promise. Worship him day and day out you are going to have the beautiful life that he chose, your eternal life. Then the, the last thing what I understood as this high level thing is, uh, we have to see the accompanying verse 828, 829. Okay, so I'm going to show this to you all. 
so once so once eight twenty eight twenty nine. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Trust me, the first time when I read it, I never understood what it meant also. But then I started reading it multiple times until and asked the Holy Spirit because the old Hilda used to believe that she can do everything because I had a very high level confidence about myself. But I realized that, and that's why in the past I could never understand the understand the Bible other than the other than the scriptures in the uh, New Testament, which are normally read for sermons, uh, sorry, for gospel reading and the first reading. But today, because I trust the Holy Spirit and pray to the Holy Spirit to give me the wisdom to understand, and um, I realized that when I and trusted into the Holy Spirit, I understood what this means. And basically what it means is ultimately God wants us to accomplish the best in, the li in our lives because we are his children. He wants us to make us like his image. And that goes back to Genesis when God created us, starting with Adam, he created us in his likeness. So praise God, I'm going to start getting into the details. Anybody has any questions for me? Okay, so there are two things. When there are no questions, A, people are not following what I'm speaking. B, is people are very clear what's going on. So I'm hoping it's the B part. I know we'll be having the fellowship at the uh, uh, end of the session, but you can always ask me to stop and explain. So as I said, I'm going to go through part A and part B. I am going to stop after another 10, 15 minutes and then have, uh, so that way we can have it more interactive today. So I'll start going through this um, scripture in details. I've broken down into multiple words. And that's, the, I thought that by breaking down into multiple words, we will be able to give true meaning to it. Okay, so what I did was, as I started, the way I started understanding is, so back again, we'll go here. And we know that things were good for those who love God. I took this word of love. What does love mean? Okay, for, and we know that all things were good for those who love God. So remember, as I said, this is a promise to those who have um, uh, are working very hard to get out of their old habits and through faith have accepted Jesus as their Lord, God and Savior. That is the first thing. When you do that, you're going to start leading a supernatural life. That is because of your love for God, things are going to change. The second thing I say, I realize is, in terms of love, by an enlightening power of the Holy Spirit, we understand that it was love that sent Jesus to the cross to shed his blood for us and take the punishment of our sins and obey our Father. So what does it mean is, Jesus has sacrificed himself as a lamb and for our sins, he went onto the cross. So he had, so God loved us so much that he sent his only son to the cross so that we can come out of our old habits. So all that we need to do is, we don't need to do much, but he, we need to build fellowship with Jesus, ignite our love for him. We don't have, so the price as Brother Vincent has always shared in his um, teachings is Jesus already paid the price for us. All we need to do is believe him. It might be saying, as I said earlier, it is not too much. Yeah, but it is lots. <clears throat> in our day-to-day -day life and in this, whether it is this generation or in the prior generation, 
believing in Christ and to follow his earthly, uh, follow his ways in our earthly uh, mission is not so easy. At times, um, <clears throat> we get uh, dejected, we get upset, but um, remember one thing, it, it needs uh, our help from God to overcome all um, those type of negatives in us. And I, I was reading one quote, and that quote actually helped me. At times, it, when we look around, we get depressed looking at others. We feel, and this is my old self, okay, not my new self. My new self, because now I'm in Christ, it really doesn't bother me. But my old self would be, we would look at others and we would they get depressed. Oh, why are others having all those things? Why it can't be me? We look within ourselves, we'll feel depressed and say, oh, um, I could do much better. I have not done that. But uh, all that it asks, the third thing is, look at Jesus. And when you look at Jesus, you will relax. You will realize that others might have X, Y, Z. You have the most of everything because you have God in you. You have the creator in you. There's nothing of feeling upset, feeling sad any day. The sadness doesn't come. It is actually the once you start living a life in Christ, every day is a happy day, irrespective because you know that your God is with you. So what I did was I said that in order to know this, I went back to look like a brother Vincent always says, how do we experience uh, give us like love God so much? Uh, because I'll tell you there are occasions for me when I will tell, I used to tell a friend, hey, this is whatever I have done. Uh, she was one day praising me. I said, this is not me. Okay, this is always God who is the one who has done for me. So, and for me, I always give praises to God. I'm just as uh, I heard in all the sessions, we are like empty vessel, but God that is in you is giving you the kind of uh, wisdom, the talent, the power to do things. But how did I start always acknowledging God, even prior to being a uh, this uh, the uh, new believer in Christ, I used to always love God. I feared God always. I would never do anything which was wrong because I would say that is against my values. And how those values came? Those values came from uh, God that is the Holy Spirit residing in us. But being once I became a true believer, all those concepts of being afraid, being uh, being worried were it started diminishing slowly, slowly, and now it is almost going off. It just doesn't bother me at any point of time because if you have the creator living in you, nothing bothers you. The presidents of the country, the wars, or whatever, someone who is uh, who thinks who is powerful and tries to trouble, nothing bothers you because you have so much faith. And it's because you love God, you have that kind of faith. So. I started asking myself, how did I love God so much that I get up in the morning, first thing I start praising him, worshipping him. Then I realized through Brother Vincent's sessions, we love him because he first loved us. And that is so true. Because Jesus, a God of Father, Holy Spirit, showed his love to us. Okay? And if you go back in your life, close your eyes and you think back, of things that have happened in your life because he loved us first, we love him. It's like um, those who are married, you can understand, or those who are parents, you can understand oh, whatever situation you are. If the other party did not show you love, would you show love? I wouldn't think so, right? But remember one thing, all those things which have worked in your life is because God loved you we love him because he first loved us. 1 John 4, 19. And then I went back to this scripture, 1 John 14, 21. John 14. 
Someone saying something? Hmm. Uh, those who are not, praise God, those who are not speaking, please be on mute. So 1 John 14, 21, what it says is, I will just go to it. Um, it says that he that uh, had my commandment and keep that, he would be that he would love us. So 14, 21, 14, AJV. Okay, so the person who truly responds to God's calling and salvation as a result, God will love him and uh, he will, God will reveal him his ways. Hold on, guys. Um, so, I will go here. 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 He that hears my commandment and keeps them, he is that loved me, and he that loved me shall be loved by my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So remember this. When you obey God's instruction, can everyone see what I'm saying, uh, speaking? Yes, sister. Thank you, sister Janet. Yes, yes. So, yeah. so what it means is, the one who obeys his instruction, his commandment, and we spoke about those two commandments, Loving God and being good to your fellow believers or non-believers. Just being good to everyone around you and keeps them. He is that loving me. He, he is that who loves me and shall be loved by my father. So if you love God and God loves you, uh, sorry, Jesus loves you, then because this is from, this is something that Jesus is telling us, then God our Father will love um, you and, and he will manifest himself to you. And what I understood from it is when he manifests himself to you, he will make things work out for your good. Okay? So let me go to this. You can observe when, when you see such things in a person, I can observe myself and that's how I can say. When you observe such things in a person, you know that the person has changed to a new level. Okay, He sincerely strives to obey the Lord's instruction in all areas of his life. And when he stumbles and gets up, he asks God for forgiveness Okay, and tries to work on himself. And how can you try to work on yourself? By using various resources. Like we have these preaching sessions that we review our faith in God daily. Uh, we attend Bible sessions. Okay, we try to help people in whatever we can. When we see people in deep trouble, we'll try to be there for them. And uh, basically, are increasing uh, victory over ish, uh, all kinds of temptation. I, I, I tell you for myself, um, you know, in the past, uh, when uh, people would uh, criticize one another at workplace i would uh, i slowly started coming to a point that i did not want to be involved in this uh, discussion because i knew it is not helping me in any shape or form and now so much so i i realize that i'm working in terms of being a new person is i know that there is i was sharing it last night with my cousin who came to visit us that there is a lady on my uh, team and uh, she's a very super sensitive lady. And I realized that uh, she becomes very vulnerable. People, uh, especially my manager at times, he can be extremely rude to her. And uh, I noticed that this lady gets oh, into tears. So huh? guys, if you are not talking, please be on mute. So. Oh, uh, please, can you be on mute, Sister Marigala? So, 
so i started thinking to myself hey, noticing a person being in tears in meeting made me feel very bad because i said hey this is the time i need to help i need to help this lady so i i spoke to her and i asked this lady how are you and then she spoke to me for almost one hour she was completely deep in tears and um, i just told her that uh, it's okay and i started uh, speaking to her then on the weekend when i was in the church i started feeling like uh, if the holy spirit talking to me yes that was nice of you to talk to her and be there for her because you noticed she was crying but i expect you to do much more and i'm wondering what is it then on monday morning i went when i as i was drinking coffee i was talking to my other coworker how do we help and then he said uh, you know one thing he said the manager called and said that he was uh, yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah. sister mariola can you be on mute please so he said that uh, we can try to do something for this lady so i went to my manager and i spoke to my manager how can we i would appreciate that on the calls the be nice to um, this person the person who is very sensitive because uh, it's be motivating for him jabta terrace lo jane ka bare bare pe jabta hey is there a way how i can make her who ever mute hold on mm, everybody is on mute hold on hold up guys okay there you go on mute okay so so this is what as i was saying to you once you start believing in god god only gives you uh, the power he helps you and uh, i felt when i spoke to my manager hey let's be nice to the other lady he agreed with me and he said to me yes let's uh, let me know what i'm doing wrong because my manager did not even realize that he's hurting that other lady and um, he said please i would appreciate if you can provide me feedback i never knew i was hurting people so what i'm just saying is stand up guys when you feel that um, you can help someone even if you have to go out of your comfort zone that's the biggest thing that god is asking you and he will give you the power the holy spirit will give you the power and the conviction to talk to others and to help others so okay so coming back um so that is in terms of love because god loved us so much okay we are now learning to love one another and that's how i started realizing i'm chinya i'm trying to help one another because i know that i have the super power that is of god the creator's help in our daily life and then i realize the next thing is when we go back to the scripture on months 828 and we know that all things work together for good for those who love him and live according to his purpose okay so so what i said is and we know and we know means it is the fact we say and we know that's a promise that god gives us so coming back when it's a promise how do you know that that the promise is always kept by god so for those over here in this bible session who must be in knowing habakku 23 you know what is habakku 23 habakku 23 say is that i will set my watch upon this tower and will wait to see what he will say unto me and what i shall answer when i am reprieved a reproof and the lord said he will run through what our request is it will not lie though it might tarry wait for it surely come it will not tarry okay that is the scripture um, from habaku 2 uh, 3 then i went to other scriptures hebrews 13 8 hold on guys my mission is so slow i to use my cell phone only praise god thank you jesus 
so um, in hebrew 13:8 a uh, titus 1:2 there are also god's promises in every god's promise he has made sure that he has told us going to he is going to make things work for us it just that he calls on us him so coming back and we know and we know is a promise that god has given us like in every scripture which i have read ezekiel 12:28 uh, habaku 23 uh, uh, hebrew 13:8 and we know is a promise um all things work together for good so work together for good so what it means is so this is god's promise if we love him and trust him in his promise he is using the events in our life to create us in the likeliness of his beloved son so if our heavenly father is try, trying to create us in the likeliness of our beloved son means isn't that a great blessing because if we are going to be in the image of jesus we are, the first thing is we are going to have eternal life i i ask my question what does it mean having eternal life eternal life is having the peace have leading a supernatural life it's a great blessing for us to have that and to be more uh, conformed to the image of christ so once you are conformed to the image of christ god is using us bless others okay to bless others our family members our neighbors our co-workers fellow believers and non believers god is using us to reach out to others who are lost because even those events which have come in your life which have shaken us up and we cling on to god's That's promise all god, all god all is all going all to change us and he's going to help us to come closer to him okay so what i'm going to do is it is 7:20 uh, it's uh, for me like almost 30 minutes that i spoke and i know that since it's not an interactive session and i want to get people's input so i'm going to pause over here and i'll have a part b next week so that way we can make sure we have totally understood this um scripture because verse 829 and 830 are the ones which are so beautiful it's when i understood verse 829 and 830 this this is what brother vincent always tells us is that there's a hidden treasure in every verse so when i understood 829 and 830 i went back to uh, what the lady uh, whom i met the pastor's wife and the other lady who told me why the scripture is coming to their mind when i speak because i understood from 829 and 830 so i'm going to pause over here and we'll meet in next week's session to get into 829 romans 829 830 so before i stop anybody has any questions on what i spoke today okay if nobody has any questions then um a brother hubert do you want to do the closing prayer yes surely can i start Yeah, go ahead, brother uh, Hubert. Exodus fifteen two says, "The Lord is my strength and my defense; He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise Him, my Father's God, and I will exalt Him." Lord, we just thank you, Abba Father, for this wonderful, awesome teaching. awesome is is the word only for you lord thank you holy spirit for speaking through sister hilda <clears throat> towards 
that you have made everything for us. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us in our day-to-day -day lives. And as Sister Hilda said, to be a blessing to others, to be a blessing to our neighbors, to be a blessing to our family, our friends, our colleagues. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit, for guiding us. Because only you guide us, Lord, in all righteousness. The, the God of the world cannot guide anybody, but you are guiding us, Lord. Show us, and you're showing us what to do and how to do, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. Jesus Christ, you are in us, Lord. And when you are in us, we can do all things, Lord. Thank you, Abba Father, for this wonderful teaching once again. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Amen. Brother Hubert. Praise God. Let me stop the recording. Okay. Uh...